I'm Cooper Spiker. And I'm Grayson Spiker. We are from North Star High School in Montana, and we are presenting Illustrated Talk in the Senior Category. Today we're going to talk to you about keeping your head in the game. You're running down the sideline, about to break open a big run, and bam, get blindsided and crushed. Or you're going up for the rebound and get an elbow to the temple and can't remember who you are or what you're doing. Concussions are a very real and serious part of every sport at every level. It doesn't matter if it's junior high or the NFL. Recent studies have shown that concussion rates have doubled in the last 10 years. 1.6 to 3.8 million athletes suffer sports-related concussions every year, with 300,000 of those being high school athletes. Football players suffer the most concussions, with boys lacrosse and girls soccer coming in second and third respectively. Another study has shown that after your first concussion, you're one to two times more likely to suffer a second, two to four times more likely to suffer a third, and three to nine times more likely to suffer a fourth. And with each concussion, your chances of getting a severe one or a second, secondary impact syndrome, which we'll discuss in detail later, greatly increases. And it's also been proven that 11% of all concussions are recurring concussions. And while the spike in concussion numbers is alarming, it is a bit of a product of the system because as people become more aware and know what to look for, more concussions do get diagnosed. What is a concussion? A concussion is a traumatic brain injury that occurs when the brain sloshes around inside the skull. It is caused by either a direct impact or a whiplash-like movement of the head. Some signs of a concussion are unequal pupils, lack of coordination, such as touching your finger to your nose, and lack of memory to everyday questions such as who are you, what day is it, and who is the president. Some symptoms of a concussion are headaches, nausea and vomiting, excuse me, balancing problems, dizziness, blurry vision, fatigue, and sensitivity to light and noise. And long-term effects of concussions are long-term memory loss, emotional distress, swelling of some types of limbs, depression, and increased possibility of suicide. As I said earlier, with each concussion you get, your chances of getting secondary impact syndrome greatly increases. And secondary impact syndrome, or SIS, is when your brain swells so much that it compromises your brain stem and it does ultimately lead to death. The general rules of thumb when dealing with a concussion is that a coach needs to pull them out of the game immediately before they suffer a second or third concussion. They then need to go to a doctor so they can figure out what the best treatment options is and to see if it's actually severe enough. And it's very, very important that a parent or someone wakes up this individual every two hours for the next two nights to make sure they're not in a state. And the golden rule when it comes to concussions is that an athlete should not ever return to a sport, whether it be a practice or a game, until they are 100% healthy and cleared by a doctor. And these are some pictures of some sports that we play in our community. And it's hard to see, but there's a purple helmet there. And the guy hit him so hard, his helmet came off which is a potential for a whiplash type of concussion. Testing tools. An important tool in preventing secondary and recurring concussions is baseline testing. And there are two major types. There's the pencil and paper, like the SCAT-2, and there's computerized, like the IMPACT. Typically, computerized is preferred because the test retest is more reliable, it's a little more accurate, it's a little bit easier to administrate. And the typical protocol for handing these out is before your first sport in your freshman year, you take the test, and you take it every two years. If you've suffered concussion, you take it every year. The school then stores your baseline test on file. So if you do suffer a concussion, you have to retake this test until your score has reached an acceptable level as based on your baseline score that's set by the school. It is a bit pricey for this computerized. It's about $350 a year for our small school of 60 kids. And while it is a bit pricey, can you really put a price tag on the safety of a child? The general protocol for dealing with concussions starts with the referees or observers. Observers are people put on the sideline to specifically look for someone that might have a concussion. And once they think they might see one, they tell the coach, whose job is to then immediately pull them out of the game. We have EMTs on the sideline of every court and game we play, so they then look at the student, and if they think they're even the slightest bit possibly concussed, 
they have to go to a doctor. We'll then give them the best treatment options, look at it, make sure it's not severe. And they're also the ones who will clear the athlete to return to the sport, along with them having to meet the baseline standards. At North Star High School, we are very, very strict about not letting anyone play until they've been cleared by a doctor and meet the baseline requirements. We picked this project for two reasons. One is for how it relates to family and career community leaders of America, or better known as FCCLA and what it stands for. The second reason is because it really hits home in our community. We believe this relates to FCCLA because not only does it deal with the physical wellness of the person affected by the concussion, but it also deals with the overall well-being of the people that know that person. This can include family, friends, coaches, fellow student athletes, and the community in general. And that is why these baseline tests are so important, because these people know that the student is coming back 100% healthy. Our community is very small and we are very tight-knit, where everybody knows everybody on a personal level. And so when one person is affected by a concussion, we are all affected, excuse me, affected. And so that's why the baseline tests are very important. And this relates to family consumer science curriculum in the areas of child development, family dynamics, and careers, with such related careers as medicine and teaching. In the last few years at our school, we've had five plus concussions. We have nearly lost a girl because her brain had so much swelling. She had emergency brain surgery, and she lived. And this incident really brought concussions to the forefront of many people's thoughts, not only in our community, but many other communities in the area. After this girl suffered her concussion, a local doctor strongly pushed us to adopt some form of baseline testing. Initially, we had the SCAT tube, which is the pencil and paper, but not long after, we adopted the IMPACT, which is computerized. <coughs> and after we adopted, Several schools in our area also decided to use a form of baseline testing, and that's a big goal with our project, is to try to get other schools to use it. And not only do we want to promote baseline, but we also want to spread awareness of the signs and symptoms and what to do if you, your child or someone you know has a concussion. Because if the mom of the girl that suffered with serious concussion wouldn't know to wake her up every couple hours, she probably wouldn't have made it. Because she did, she got to a hospital, got her surgery, and became a full functioning person. She graduated valedictorian of her class. She became a state FCCLA officer and returned to playing all three sports without any problems. And it, we also want to point out that it's very important to know just because it's not severe initially doesn't mean it's not. This girl went to the hospital immediately after her concussion and they sent her home. They didn't think it was severe, but it ended up bleeding overnight, which caused the problems. So our main goal with this project was to spread awareness of the signs, symptoms, and what to do, and also promote baseline testing. At, we handed out a brochure with all that information on, with our programs and our sports last year. And this year, we plan on talking to all our teammates about what to look for, because more often than not, they're going to be the ones that notice someone's concussed because they're interacting on a more personal level than someone just watching. In conclusion, we have told you that a concussion is a traumatic brain injury suffered by 300,000 300, high school athletes per year. And you are more likely to receive multiple concussions after suffering your first one. And 11% of all those concussions are subsequent concussions. Second impact syndrome occurs when you suffer an additional concussion before your previous one is 100% healed. And when you have second impact syndrome, or SIS, your brain swells and compromises the brain stem, ultimately leading to death. And that's why baseline testing is instrumental in preventing recurring concussions and possible SIS. We hope this project influences other schools to get baseline testing and learn the signs and symptoms of concussions so they can prevent recurring concussions and maybe save a child's life. This concludes our presentation. Thank you for your time. Do you have any questions for us?